I'm sure uh, you all will remember about the three wise men, how they were guided by the stars to the birth of Jesus as per the Bible. So Jesus, when he was found through the stars, I would say, find yourself through the stars. I want to demystify astrology for you. Because you all must have heard n number of times about astrology, the zodiac signs, and uh, these are the, you know, uh, pointers towards a person who is an Aryan or who is a Taurian and the uh, positives, the negatives, blah, 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 blah. But you know, I feel the understanding is incomplete until and unless you know the background of astrology, how it emerged, what, what is its contribution to a human life. Starting uh, now with the 12th science, I want you all to understand that the oldest of all techniques according to me for understanding and predicting situations and events here or on the earth is unquestionably astrology. Now astrology is very very closely linked with astronomy. Astrology was the first developed in the northern hemisphere. It has been used for thousands of years by numerous cultures as an important part of the oldest profession for staying alive and living well. You know in the olden days, in days gone by, uh, our ancestors on a starry night sky, uh, this, uh, they watched very closely the movement of the stars. Not only was it incomparably beautiful, but it provided a fixed backdrop against which the moon's nightly movement could be measured. People noticed that some of the stars moved too and they were known as planets, meaning the wanderer in Greek. Every 29 days the moon welled full and moved to the next section of the zodiac. In Greek meaning the circle of stars or the cluster of stars or the circle of animals. The narrow belt of sky that the sun, moon and planets move through appeared to be circling the earth. Every 12 full moons, now we have 12 full moons in a year. So every 12 full moons as we now call them the seasons would return clockwise and they returned with a precision. Now this information was vital to our ancestors because they could use it to prepare for different seasons. Now, the zodiac, as we call, or I would say the compartments which we call zodiacs, they were divided into 12 sections according to the full moons. We have 12 full moons. Similarly, the zodiac was divided into 12 sections and the stars in each section were identified and identified as a unit called constellations which means a group of stars each constellation was given a name a sign that symbolized the natural events taking place on earth during the time of the year when the sun was moving through or was in each zodiac Obviously, you are going to answer, answer, question me again by saying, are you basing your things on the solar or the lunar uh, thing? I just want you here to understand how zodiacs were formed. The 12 full moons is very tangible to be explained that yes, there are uh, 12 uh, units in a year. You know, there are 12 times that the moon turns full and then it dissipates and starts uh, dissipating or it starts, it's on the rise or it's on the down. So the moon is easier to understand. If I'm going to talk about the sun, right, you will probably get confused because the star, sun never emerges or diminishes. It just gets eclipsed uh, by the moon uh, when the moon comes between the earth and the sun. So here, just to make it simpler for you, that the 12 zodiac signs coordinate with the 12 full moons. These are the periods. Our ancestors 
divided these uh, 12 full moons into 12 different groups. So as uh, the moon was on the rise and as the moon was on the decline and uh, we came into different seasons and people born under the different seasons actually adopt that kind of um, uh, attitudes towards themselves. Now uh, the sun it travels through all these 12 uh, zodiac signs and it comes back to spring. So the return of the sun to the portion of the zodiac occupied by the constellation Aries marked the return of the spring and so the cycle began again from the Aries, then the Taurus, then the Gemini, then the Cancer, then the Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces and back to Aries. It's like a clockwork precision. Right now, this is applicable throughout the world. The seasons, the sowing of the seeds, nurturing of the seeds, and then the person when he's done with his sowing of the seeds, he has time for his personal self, and then how he has to balance and analyze of what the first six months did and the last six months do. So until the outbreak of this age of scientific realism some 300 years ago. Astrology and astronomy were so closely relatable as they were indistinguishable. I mean astrology was astronomy, astronomy was astrology. That's how close they went side by side.